to infinity and beyond. What's up, everybody? Roger and James here from DizKingdom.com and DizGaming.com with Infinity and Beyond. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about Kingdom Hearts 3. Brand new trailer, literally just broke just before we recorded this one here. Um, after the there was a special orchestra show that was in Los Angeles as part of the tour they're doing. And as such, they all got treated to a brand new trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. It was then released online afterwards, so we all got to see it. I'm saying also that there's going to be a, another trailer and a new world announced at the D23 Expo in July. I mean, this kind of trailer really did break out of nowhere. No one was really expecting it the way it dropped. I think everyone was thinking it would be in the trailer section of their Square Enix premise. Again, if they they did a very good job of grabbing all the attention on that Sunday morning of all the websites going, whoa, new trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. Um... It definitely it was on all the big major websites. Um, the trailer itself, I'm going to be honest, this game looks awesome. I mean, it literally does look such a step up from anything we've seen before. I mean, the villains of seeing Pete, uh, Maleficent, and um, Hades. Hades together, I mean, that just looked like that was from a movie. That looks so good. Yeah, it, it certainly looks fantastic. I mean, that's not really a surprise because we know what uh, two point or zero point two in the two point eight collection look like. But to actually see it in action, to see you know Sora and Goofy and Hercules in action against the Heartless, uh, it looks great. I mean, the trailer's in Japanese, so whatever they're talking about, I don't have the slightest. Clue. And I got it. Subtitles. It did have subtitles, yeah. um, but I wasn't really paying attention no. to subtitles. I was kind of engaged with the uh, the visuals. I do have to say this, though. Hearing classic Disney characters, or even pseudo-classic characters like Hades and Maleficent, with Japanese voices is surreal. It, yeah. It's so weird. I think for me, because I, I watched a lot... I've watched a lot of manga and, um, like... Um, like well, martial arts I, movies and stuff, so therefore, like watching animation in like with dark, with subtitles doesn't seem seem too bad. But I think it's that thing of hearing it, and as someone that's been to Tokyo and Paris theme parks, where you do hear characters talking in different languages, it is that we I know what you mean. It's that weird thing of you have this association in this character with this character, and suddenly it doesn't match up to what you what you remember. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hardly, you know, um, specific to this, because anytime you, yeah. you know, you watch a TV show or whatever, and they change the voice actor for whatever reason, um, it, it's always a, a change. But you've got, not only do they sound different, but they're talking a completely different language as yeah. well. So it, it, there's definitely that disconnect. Having said that, I mean, that's that's a minor thing, obviously, yeah. when it comes to them, uh, when they do a proper trailer for... Uh, probably at D23. I assume it will be in English at that point. Yeah. Uh, well, what will be said it in English on the end of the tra even in the Japanese trailer. Oh, did it say uh, in English? It okay. said it, like that. D23 Expo was even in English on the end. Um, again, it, I mean the the footage of them in taking on that big rock machine that looks so much better than it did in the initial trailer from 2013. Mm -hmm. um, the fighting, I mean, there's big fists coming out. There's you know, it looks so much more um, just. The moves, he just looks super powered compared to what he did in the first game. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they've clearly taken um, the lessons they've learned with the non-main uh, titles. That is, you know, things like um, uh, Zero Point Two and and the the story with Aqua in it and the various mm. DS games. And they've added things to the core titles. You know, K Kingdom Hearts One and Two into Kingdom Hearts 3, so we get this mishmash of all, like, the best parts of all the games that have mm. come before it, uh, except for, hopefully, the cards yeah. from the, the, uh, from the GBA game. Mm. No, no card battles, please. No. Um, <laughs> it just, I mean, there's this whole thing, I mean, it's a standing joke about, like, the release date and all the rest of it, and when's this game actually coming out? I mean, looking at that trailer, it looks pretty finished. It looks pretty good. Um, we keep hearing reports. Obviously, it's delayed back, pushed back. Personally, I feel this game is coming next year because um, I think Disney and Square Enix are like going, we're putting down that nail and going, right, we want this out. We want this done. You need to 
speed up. We want more Kingdom Hearts games more regularly. You know, get out some DLC. Get out some, you know... This game has been, you know, four years ago it got announced. You know, it gets to a certain point where they can't... The, I also find it very interesting that we have a trailer now and a trailer at D23. It sounds to me like we're getting into hype train territory of get that information out there. Whether or not it's coming this year. Um, the fact it's not part of E3 this much shows to me is we're definitely not seeing it this side of Christmas, which is why we're not seeing too much, so much of it. No, and honestly, Disney doesn't want it to come out this year because it would conflict with so many of their other major releases, um, even if it was ready, and I doubt it. But, I mean, Disney certainly has its own history of mm -hmm. titles that have been in development for a long time. I'm talking about movies yeah. here, not video games. Um, we can track, like, say, The Little Mermaid, which was in development for decades. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know they're a business. They have the you don't turn profits on games that don't get released. Nah. So they want this at market. They want it to be released. And at a certain point, you've also go. You've got to go. I respect your artistic vision, mm. but people have to see it. <laughs> it's like, you know. Yeah. And also it, the, it, the trouble is, with, like I said, with that trailer, like I said earlier, if they don't get. The trouble is the technology is moving so fast that you end up doing like they did with Last Guardian, where it looks from a previous generation because they're taking so long over it. Um, you know they've had to clear clean things up. It's you know I think they ha they are going to have to speed things up because they're going to want you know we're going to want Kingdom Hearts four or five six. You know they've got used to doing pretty much an annual game or a biannual game since the move since the original one got released. But they've always been like side bits. It's like I don't. I think now they'll be like, no, we can just keep rolling on. You know, I think, you know, as much as you go, know, well, we haven't got Kingdom Hearts three. Don't worry about Kingdom Hearts four and five yet. But you know, they are gonna be thinking much more advanced. I think like that. Right, and I hope that we never see Kingdom Hearts become or forced to become an annual or biannual game, I would prefer that it get that extra level of polish that you get from, say, a three- or four-year development cycle. But the games have to come out. Yeah. And, you know, you can't just dangle it over the fans' heads for a while. And, yeah. and especially if you're going to drop trailers like this. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, this is definitely like the here. It definitely, I mean, this wouldn't surprise me if it was a summer 2018 or um, you know, July, August, September next year wouldn't I? I I'd see earliest I'd see it. Even it's definitely not spring because we're already hearing stuff being announced for spring at E3 already. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's definitely not on that. But you know, this trailer really did. It did just drop out of nowhere. Um, I don't think. It, I mean, I had an inkling that we would get a trailer during, because when I looked at the Square Enix presentation schedule, it was like, there was a thing about there being trailers. I'm going, well, maybe they will chuck one in there. But this one did, I, I think the fact they did it at the orchestra, I think that was good. They had their own Kingdom Hearts event with thousands of people in attendance for this show. It made sense for them to use the hype. And it allows them to really focus on it because if they had launched this during their own event or during the xbox event or whatever it would have just been one trailer yeah. among many in this case you know you get people who you know are fans because as you mm. mentioned it was at the the kingdom hearts orchestra so everyone there or at least 95 mm. percent of the people there are kingdom hearts yeah. and it's on its own. There's no other announcements happening at that time of night, so it gets all of the hype up until the beginning of the next day when the, yeah. when the next batch of trailers drops. This was... I don't know if it was Square's plan. I don't know if it was Disney's mm. plan. Who came up with this? But whoever did, mm. it was perfect marketing. This is exactly yeah. how you get a trailer released in the middle of a huge trade show and get yeah. people to pay attention to it. Yeah. I definitely... Um, <laughs> It's that kind of thing where they're going, right, okay, it's E3 week. We know we're going to have some news to talk about. But in some ways for us, because of the way that Saturday and Sunday worked out with the news was Battlefront. And it, can, it, it almost like spreads out the news over a couple of weeks. And so this is, this is you know, this is just good. I'm um, just a hope. Very excited about Kingdom Hearts 3. Just want to play it. Um, yeah, so now we just literally got a few weeks now to wait till D23 for some more. Yeah, I mean, and... Literally because of the time zone differences, we were getting announcements up until 
minutes before we started recording. <laughs> Granted, yeah. not not Kingdom Hearts, but the uh, the Bethesda yeah. um, event was actually wrapping up just as we're like, hey, let's get started talking about uh, some Disney stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that thing of like, literally going to bed like while the Xbox presentation was still going on and waking up. And I wasn't Bethesda, expecting Bethesda to do an announcement for anything. But... You just never knew what was what's going to be coming up. Um, the, obviously, we've got the Spider-Man that are going to be shown off a bit. We've got some other titles coming out. So we will be definitely be um, tr trying to do our best to keep up with it all. But as per usual, to keep up with all of that, um, check us out over at disgaming.com and at disgaming.com. Um, you can also find James over at HeroicLegacy.com. It's a quick note as well to say that if you are interested in cars free driven to win, we currently have a giveaway running on both websites, so you definitely want to check that out as well. And finally, you can find us on all the different social medias and stuff. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Laters. Later. What's up, everybody? Roger and James here from DizKingdom.com and DizGaming.com with Infinity and Beyond. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about